And if he's watching my channel... Alright, I am live. So... He should... If he goes to my channel, he should see my live stream, as far as I know. So, it says... I'm on Hangouts. But I don't see an invite. Okay. Um, Invites. Here we go. Oh, did you get it? I think so. So I accepted, and thanks for walking me through this silly technical crap, dude. No problem. It's kind of what I'm doing. Okay. Where did it go, you silly boy? <laughs> um, I also emailed it to you. Have it. You found it. Do I you see me on there? Here. Let's. It says I'm the only one here, so no one else is in the Hangouts call with me. I live streamed it so because I put the link there too, so that you could join. Oh. Well, but I'm using it right now to make sure that we're actually in it. So please just let me do it. Okay, but you're, you're in a chat, Maybe. so I can send you something. Click that. Click that. Okay. Click it. Hello. Hello? Hey. Oh. Uh, it appears as though you still have not joined my call. Oh, God. I will. Oh, hey, there you are. Now you're in it. I'm hanging up. I just heard Zan. Hey, Zan. All right. Sweet. So now that you've got that, Zan, I think if you go to my channel on YouTube, you should be able to see it. I'm really hoping that we do a little better each time that I try to do a live stream <laughs> and it gets a little bit easier um oh yeah it's going now episode two let's make the move so if you go to my channel <laughs> we'll get there we need a what Zan, have you been able to get into the video? Okay. Then I'm going to send you a chat message with the link. That's a link to the video. If you just click that, it should open it up for you. Um, well, I shouldn't need to. If you're in Hangouts, you should... Okay, let me try this. Okay, I just sent it in the video chat, so if you're looking at the video chat, you should see a little chat bubble in the bottom left. With a link. Did you get it? Uh, so, once you're in, say something to chat in the chat just to let me know. Oh, oh, I hear me. <laughs> that works. <laughs> okay, let's get rolling. Yeah. I've got Zan and Aria here today. Uh, nobody else seems too interested today, so we're just going to keep going. So Zan, you can see my screen. You can see I've got three creeps. Uh, I've got a map. Um, what I decided to do, and I'm going to walk beam. you guys through how I got to here. There's a beam. Um, is... 
Oh wait, what am I hearing? I don't hear anything. Oh, hey Zan, can you turn the video down? Because I hear myself very clearly. <laughs> I'll be sitting in the yeah, if you're in my if you're in the phone call, go ahead and mute the video, cause or or mute the phone call rather, one or the other. But if you ha or mute your mic unless mm, you're gonna talk. Mm. Either way, well, however you're doing it, but uh, just yeah, it's good now. All right, so you should see the game here. Uh, it looks like the I made the scorpions a little bit smaller. And I'll show you how I did that. I also opted to just use the base map that they gave us. And I'm going to show how we can put these images together and just use them kind of like that, like a picture. And then set the game up on top of the picture. So that gives us the freedom to put these together any way we want and any application that we want. Um, and I'll show you some options for that. Um, so uh, we'll... First things first, let's go over a couple of settings in Godot that we needed to change. So if you're following along, um, great. If not, you can do this anytime. Are they going to so follow the green path? Go up to Project menu up at the top. Yeah, the green path is where they'll be able to go. And you can go to Project Settings. And then one of the things you want to be able to do here is uh, you can type Display in the search here. And when you click window and go down to the bottom, there's this mode here where it says stretch mode. And by default, it says disabled. Um, choose 2D um, for this kind of a game. So what 2D is going to do is it's going to make it so that re depending upon the uh, screen size that you've got the game playing on, the game will either zoom or get smaller. So as you saw, like I made it full screen and it went full screen and it still looks good. Uh, previously, if I had done that, the game would have been small up in the corner here, and it wouldn't have zoomed properly. So we fixed that. And then the other settings that I had to change, let's see. I think that was, that was the only settings I had to change so far, except for I took that camera that we had previously, and I set its position to 0, 0, and its scale to 0, 0. I dragged the background... Uh, image onto the screen and this game background one I just dragged it out onto the screen and I set its scale to 0.54 on the X and 0.56 on the Y and that made it fit perfectly within the camera got our, our ratios right and got our resolution looking good and then I will walk you guys through how we set up the navigation stuff and then we'll have to get cracking on some coding and uh, I made a few new nodes. So we're going to walk over how those were done. And that may be all we can get through today, but I'd like to get it so that we can at least make something move. That would be fun. So we'll give the scorpions a brain before the end of the day. They may just walk in a straight line, but that'll be something. So um, let's first talk about the new nodes that I had to make. Um, I'm working on some other ideas here, and that's what these are. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those. So we're just going to be worried about the scorpion, which we had before, the spawn point, and the build point. So we've already made the scorpion, and I haven't changed anything there, so we're going to talk about the spawn point real fast. Uh, right now, all I did was I went up to scene, new scene, and that creates a spawn point. Alternatively, you can click here, so you can add a new scene. You click the 2D scene button, and then you can click on here and hit enter or double click or right click and say rename and what that'll let you do is change the name on this guy and just call it spawn point like that now I already have one so I'm gonna close this out and not save it and right now all it is is a node 2d and the reason that I made it as its own node is because that allows me to come in here and in the file system I can just type spawn and that gives me a scene that I can drag in uh, onto here and allows me to set areas where the creeps will spawn into the game and that allows them to uh, start there so what's cool about this is that now that we have a spawn point we can do a few things we can set up so that it has uh, a sprite so that we can see it so let's go ahead and do that and I'm just gonna type sprite and hit enter and that gives me that 
I mean, we've got to remember to clear out. Sometimes when you look over here and you don't see anything, it is because you've got something typed here in the filter. So if you undo that, then you're good. Um, I'm just going to pick a totally random thing here. Let's see. What should we pick for a creep spawn point? Where should where should creeps start out? On a red flag? That works. Let's, <laughs> let's do it. So we can just drag that flag over onto the texture here, and that allows us to set the texture for a spawn point. So now when I go back to level one, you'll notice I got this giant flag. Obviously that's too big. I don't want to have to set the size for the flag every time I drag a spawn point onto the map. So let's go back to the spawn point. We'll click on the sprite. We'll go on the right hand side to where it says transform. Transforms anytime you're changing the position or size or rotation of the object, you're going to go to the transform on the properties here. So click on that. And you can see I'm keeping my position at 0, 0. My rotation I'm going to keep at 0, 0. But let's show you what happens if I mess with that. You can see here's how you would uh, change how it's rotated. I don't want it to be rotated at all, so I'm going to leave it at 0. But I do want to shrink it by a lot. So I'm going to put it at 0.25, so that's one quarter of its normal size. I'm going to hit save, so I hit Command S or Control S on Windows, and that will save it. Go back into here, and you can see now that flag is a much more reasonable size than it was before, so now I can put this here. Um, right now it's not going to make much sense why we need that, but, but it will when we start getting into coding. Um, another thing is, you notice how that flag is on top of the scorpion? You may be like, I don't want the flag on top of the scorpion. I want it behind the scorpion. And you may be wondering, how do I make that happen? So let's take a look at this here. So we've got our, our root node. And things are rendered or drawn to the screen in the order that they show up in this list. Which means that like first, layers. first we, yeah, like layers, exactly. So first you have the game background. That's obviously the thing we want below everything. Secondly, we have a camera, which isn't shown on the map, so that's pretty much irrelevant. You could put it anywhere, uh, as long as it's not a child of something that moves, which is a useful thing to do, but right now not what we want to do. And then secondly, uh, we've got this Navigation 2D, which is uh, it's a very useful node that allows us to give our creeps some brains so that they'll find their own paths to a destination. Uh, take some code to make that happen, but this is the first step in that direction. And then you'll notice uh, that the spawn point is after that and after the village center. So let's watch what happens if I move the spawn point. I'm just going to click and drag it up here. If, if I'm hovering over something and you see that outline around the node's name, that tells you that when I drop it, it's going to become a child of that node. If I move up just a little further and it becomes just a line, then that tells me that it's going to move the node there in the list let it go and you'll notice that the flag is no longer in front of the scorpion and if I hit play uh, you can see the flag is behind the scorpion so that worked out pretty well let's go ahead and go back all right so uh, we're gonna do one more thing here uh, you'll notice that I keep clicking this button which says play scene but sometimes uh, you just want to hit the play button because you want to play the game as it would be played you're not trying to play a specific scene so you want to play the main scene, the first one. So we'll go ahead and hit the play button. And you'll notice you'll get this alert where it says, please confirm, you've never picked a main scene. No main scene has ever been defined. Select one. You can change it later in the project settings under the application category. But right now we're just going to pick one and we're going to go ahead and let it be level one and click open. So now when I run the game, uh, either way, it's going to always come to this one. So if you had a splash screen or a main menu or something like that, you may want that to be your first screen. And so then you would change that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close this down. Go back. All right, so we're kind of getting there. We've got a spawn point now, and it looks like a flag. That's pretty cool. Now there's another thing we want to do. We're going to talk about groups. So I'm selecting the root node of the spawn point here. I'm going to go over to node, and I've got groups. Now, a group is typically a way to organize elements within your game. And the main usefulness, usefulness of uh, groups is that you can search for all nodes that are within a group and iterate through them, meaning loop through or look at each one in the list of, of nodes that are in that group. 
So here, I want to call this spawn points. And the reason that I'm creating a group here, you can put anything you want there, just kind of name it in a way that you'll be able to remember, uh, because you're going to be able to look for all of the nodes in that group. So the very cool thing about this is that now, when I go back to my level, if I want, I can come over here, and I've got spawn point, and I can drag that out onto the scene, and now that's a spawn point. And I can drag this onto the scene, and now that's a spawn point. And what's neat about this is that instead of having to know the names of all the spawn points, because I don't want to have to worry about that, what I can do is I can, there we go, now I can just uh, loop through all the nodes in the spawn point group. Yes, Arya? Um, is all the scorpion setting to there? Uh, yeah, so the idea is all of the scorpions or any bad guys coming from any of these directions would be trying to get to the village. They should probably watch out for this one because that's the closest. Yep, so this would be the closest and probably the first one you'd worry about. These two, we're talking about tower defense strategy here, so let's try to make it so we can even get things moving yet. Mm hmm. All right, does anybody have any questions about anything I've covered so far? Hmm. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to carry on. If you do get have questions, hopefully you can go back and rewatch it, and it will make sense. So notice now I'm kind of cluttering up my scene tree over here. This is kind of annoying, actually. I don't want it to be this cluttered. So let's do something. I'm going to do something that feels a little counterintuitive. I'm going to add a node to clean it up. So what I'm doing here is I'm just adding a node 2D and I'm going to get all these build points. You know, you may be asking yourself, what's a build point? Um, I will show you how I built that in just a second. So I've got all these build points. I'm going to make them all children of this one, and I'm going to call this build points, and I'm going to go like this. So now I clean that up, and now I'm going to add another one. Uh, this is a way of organizing your scene tree, and it's mainly just a convenience feature for me. I don't always do this, but I'm going to do it today because these scenes are not going to be too complicated, but they're complicated enough that I want to clean it up. All right, so we're going to go like this. Spawn points, done. All right, so now I've got spawn points and build points. I've got my navigation, which contains all of my paths. I've got this village center, um, which is right now it's just a point it literally if I let me see if I hover over this it should tell me it's a position 2d uh, this is going to act as an objective where they are trying to get so the bad guys are going to be trying to find their way to this point they're going to get as close to it as they possibly can and um, let's try to make a node that's a little smarter than just a position 2d let's go ahead and do that so I'm going to go ahead and click the plus to add a new scene click 2d scene to make a new one I'm going to call this one uh, what do you want to call it? We'll call it home base. Okay, so we're going to create a home base node. And uh, node 2D already has a position, so we don't have to do that. But we may want to add a flag. So let's go ahead and do that again. We will just say add a sprite 2D. And now that it's selected, I can click. If you see this instead of the thing you're used to seeing, uh, just keep... Keep in mind that you've got these tabs up here, so you can click on Inspector, and it should be back to what you were used to. I think, if I know, they sure don't. They don't name them that way. So we'll go back through these real quick. Here's the flag, and we're like, well, we don't want to have the same flag for the bad guys and the destination, and you're right. So we can change the color of this. We can make it a different color if we want. We can change it to all kinds of different things. Um, so let's go ahead and make it green. Now it's kind of a green flag. Uh, so that might work. Looks like we've lost some people. Have we lost anyone? Nope, we still got some people. All right, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and set my sprite's location. Uh, it looks like it moved a little bit. Okay, we're fine. And let's go ahead and set that scale on there the same as we did before. And for the node here, I'm going to make it be home base as the group. The reason I'm doing that is it might be possible that there are multiple objectives that bad guys would try to get to. And so what they're going to do is they're just going to maybe aim for a random one. Um, or maybe we can make them smart enough they try to get to the closest one. 
or maybe certain baddies prioritize certain kinds of home bases. So we can add more complexity later. But right now, we're just going to give it a home base. We're going to call it a home base group. And we're going to go ahead and get rid of village center here. Delete that node. Yep, get out of here. And I'm going to come in here and type home. You see I've got this home base scene. I'm going to drag this guy right here. So now you can see it makes it a little bit more clear for our game. Okay, this is where they're trying to get to. Okay. Question. Yep. What happens when they get there? Uh, when they get there? Well, we're going to figure that out because we're going to have to build a HUD. But today, we're a, he a HUD being a heads-up display, that's where you're going to display all the information that the users or players are going to want to know about. Mm. Um, and so I like am a beginner screen before we put first play? Uh, you'll have that too, but right now what the HUD will represent is showing things like how much health do you have left, how many villagers are still surviving, things like that. So we have to put a little thought into uh, what you're defending before we can decide what happens when you fail to defend it properly. Mm -hmm. um, Alright, so let's talk about those build points, because right now I've, I've got lots of them all around the map. And you can see that the picture had these kind of already in it. If I were making my own picture, which I was lazy and didn't, I just took the one that came with that asset pack, um, I wouldn't include the build points in the picture. And I also wouldn't include anything that overlapped the road because by doing that now, when this bad guy comes over here, he's gonna, he's gonna walk on top of these trees and that's gonna look dumb. So when I'm feeling less lazy, I will make another picture where these sorts of trees are not, uh, well, actually, I might be able to fix that. So let me show you. That's a just had an idea. So I think if I type decor, I've got all these different decor items that I can use. And one of them is a tree. Where is that tree? Or maybe not. But it's in this group here. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And let's just try to do that. So you, you guys are starting to see a little bit of my pain here. Uh, let's look for a tree. I want to find a tree. Oh, where are the trees? How how could this be happening? Where did those trees come from? The trees surely came from somewhere, but where? They did not come out of here, I'll tell you that. Alright, if you're... Can you search trees? Uh, unfortunately, they're not named in a way that makes it so that I can just search for trees. Um... Oh, those are some bushes. Ah, there's a tree. Haha. <laughs> okay, so I can take this tree and I can drag it out here. And now you'll notice that what I could do if I wanted the scorpion to show up behind it is I could actually kind of superimpose this tree onto it there. And if I make sure that eh, this tree is in front of everything else like this, then now when this scorpion, let's say this guy, comes over here and he goes, he'll be behind that tree. And now it won't look so dumb, even though this one will still look a little dumb, so I can probably fix that too. So let's go ahead and grab this tree, since that's the one that they used in that spot. We'll, we'll do this, and you can notice that they've also transformed it a little bit, so we can actually do that right here. Uh, in the game engine, we don't have to edit these outside of the game engine. It's kind of cool that you can do so many transformations on the image um, in Godot because it means that you do not have to, well that's too small isn't it? It means that you don't have to have a whole lot of assets in your game in order for it to work. Um, oh yeah, so you'll notice right now it's facing to the right and the tree needs to lean to the left. So to make something like that happen called a horizontal flip or mirror you can just change the scale on the x value to a negative value and watch now it flips. So that's something that you can do either in code or in the editor. And I mean they chose some arbitrary scaling here, but that's okay. So I this uh, tree, I'm gonna go ahead and drag it over by the other tree. And uh, you'll notice that I did that wrong because it's now on top. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag it up. Uh, we'll, grab, we'll grab this one and, and drag it below. Boom. Uh, does that look better? Yeah, that's better. See how that's kind of doing weird things there, right? So we'll go ahead and leave it like that. And let's see how that looks if I take this little scorpion guy 
and bring him over here. Is he behind both of those trees? And he is. So that looks a lot better. Um, now the scorpions, or whatever comes over here, when they walk over, they're not going to look like they're stepping in front of our background. So lazy as I am, that was easier than making another image, a whole other image. So we're just going to go ahead and leave it like that. All right. So we've got home bases. We've got spawn points made. They don't do anything yet, but we have, we're kind of building out the structure for our game. And the next thing that we can do now is the build point. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. The build point is a little different because the build point has a base node 2D. Let's just build it from scratch. Let's just go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna click the plus, add a new scene, go 2D scene, and we're gonna go ahead and call it build point. Now these are gonna serve as the locations where the player can walk up to them or click on them depending on how we choose to do that, and um, initiate the construction of a tower. So the next thing that they have is there's some sort of graphic indicating that you can build there. It looks different than the space around it. So let's go ahead and add one of those. I'm just going to drag that out there and set its location to 0, 0 up. So the trick is when you just drag something onto the scene, its transformation, its position is always going to be a little bit off. So one of the things that you can do is uh, either hitting control A or clicking the plus or right clicking and saying add child node. There's a lot of ways to do most things. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and add another node. I'm going to add a sprite. And what happens when you do it this way is it is always at zero, zero when it gets created, which is kind of handy. And um, let's go ahead and call it, uh, well, it, we can just call it sprite. That's fine. And you'll notice that it has no texture. So what we can do now is we can take this dot texture and just drag it in there and it sets it. And what that helps us do is it makes sure that it's always at zero, zero. So you can just drag it in there and go to transform and type zero, zero, then you're fine. Or you can just add a sprite, drag it to the texture, it will be at zero, zero. We do have to make it smaller. It is way too big. So we're gonna shrink that. Yeah, so we're going to have to build that whole part. Uh, we'll decide how to build it. And if you want to make... So one of the things when you're designing the user interface of your game, it helps that you can maybe draw it on paper. Uh, maybe you draw it out in Microsoft Paint, or you use GIMP, or you use Inkscape, or you're using... Uh, what's that one that you draw in all the time? Um, Procreate. Procreate, maybe you use that. Maybe you use Adobe XD. Um, which is free for use as well. So there's a lot of different options that you can use to kind of design your UI that are pretty easy. And you can play around with the, your ideas before you actually spend the time to turn them into a user interface in the game. Uh, we can cover that in a future stream, but today I'm just gonna finish this build point. So let's look at the other one that we've got. So the next thing that you'll notice is there's an area 2D and a collision shape 2D. So let's talk about those two kinds of nodes. So I'm gonna hit Command A. I'm going to add an area 2D, so I just typed it there and double click. So now an area just does what it sounds like. It defines an area, but you'll notice this little exclamation mark saying, you do not have a collision shape 2D or a collision polygon 2D as a child to define its shape. So while the area 2D is the kind of node that defines a shape, or rather it represents an area of, your, of the screen, that your users can interact with in some way. And there's, there's quite a few different signals uh, that we're about to get into what that means here in a second that um, the Area 2D node provides for you. Um, it's great for collision detection or maybe making clickable regions on your, on your screen or touchable regions on your screen. The Area 2D is good for that, but you do have to define the shape of it. So let's go ahead and add, uh, well, let's look at that error message real quick. It says you need a collision shape 2D or a collision polygon 2d so let's go ahead and, and add a collision shape 2d real quick so command a and i'm just typing the name of the thing that it said and either one of these will work but i like this one for the shape that this one is i don't need to be super precise and it's faster and simpler to just use a shape so let's go ahead and do that create and now this one's yelling at me so what does he have to say shape must be provided for collision shape 2d to function please create a shape resource for it okay so what does it mean? When in doubt, if it says something like create a shape resource for it, your best bet is to look over at the inspector tab and look for something that says shape. 
if this had said something else like please create a outline resource what i would have done is i would have looked over here and looked for outline or something along those lines the the messages in godot are actually quite useful most of the time so here we are um i think this probably looks as close as we've got to the shape that this thing is so i'm gonna click on it and be like ah oh, it's so close but not quite so let's go ahead and rotate that by 90 degrees ah that's basically perfect i'm gonna go ahead and leave it like that so now you'll notice that this build point and my build point look pretty much the same um if you wanted the interactive region to be bigger than you could grow it like this or if you wanted to grow it in a like locked ratio way then you can grab this one and it will grow in both height and width at the same time so we've now built a build point node mm -hmm. don't save now one thing that we that I hadn't done before is I hadn't put the build point into a group so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and make a build points group so we can get to that later Alrighty. Next up, um, now what we can do, and and actually one of the things we can do is we can turn this, we can change its type into an area 2D. Now you're going to be thinking, why would you do that? We already have one. But then I can take this collision shape 2D and bring it up here. I can get rid of this one altogether. That'll simplify that, and it also makes it so that this node, all by itself, already has all of these signals, which means that when I put a script on, it's going to be that much easier to work with. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and save that change, and you'll notice over here, it actually doesn't look any different uh, than it did before. This is now that guy. He belongs over here, so we'll go ahead and do that. So to add those to the map, all I had to do now to add build points to the map is I type build, and I've got this build point scene, and I can drag that on there anywhere I want. So if I wanted to add a build point here, for instance, where a tower could be set down, I could do that. And it doesn't have to be in the base map. And in fact, that's why I said I would suggest not including them in the base map, because it gives you a little bit more flexibility. But definitely maybe leave spaces in all of your decor. Or maybe you just make the path and the grass, for instance, and you add all of the decor as see as uh, sprites in the game engine either way um, doing it as a static image is going to be a little bit more performant but quite honestly we're not going to be pushing any boundaries here uh, graphically so performance is not as big of a concern um, so all right we've got now I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that extra guy that I just added so far we've talked a lot and hopefully we've you've learned a few things about adding nodes and creating them um, we've learned a little bit about Area 2D and how you can add a collision shape. So the next thing we're going to get into is those signals that I mentioned, as well as our first little snippet of code. So, take a deep breath. We're about to start coding. I'm going to the Scorpion, and I want that Scorpion to do something. Right now, he's just walking in place. That's crazy. What kind of Scorpion would just walk in place? So let's fix that. I'm over at the scorpion node, and if you didn't have it open, it's pretty easy to do. You can just type scorpion over here. Double clicking it will open up the node, so now we're looking at it. That's the fastest way to find it. And that's why I'm a strong advocate of either having a really good uh, structure to your project so you can find what you're looking for, or for making sure that you name everything in a, in a way that you'll remember it when you need to find it again. So you can just type its name, and it takes you right to it. Saves you a lot of time searching, like I had to do for the trees when I was trying to find them. Like, that was just a mess. I might go through and rename all the assets here. Okay, so select the root node. And you'll notice that there's this little icon. It kind of looks like a scroll, maybe an unfurled scroll with a little plus. Hovering over it will say, attach a new or existing script to the selected node. We do not have a script for this, so it will obviously be a new one. I'm gonna click the plus. And you'll notice that it automatically tries to tell me where it's putting it. I, I could just put it in scenes, creeps, scorpion, GD. It depends on how you think about it. If you want to keep your scripts in the same directory as the scenes that they belong to, um, which I often do, then um, go for it. Just leave it right where it says. Sometimes it's handy to 
create a designated scripts folder, uh, but I'm just going to leave it just like this. It's uh, going to be using GDScript, and you can notice there's a couple other options here, but we definitely want to use GDScript. I do not like the visual script, and I do not want to get into the native script. So GDScript, and uh, it's a Node2D, meaning it's just an object that can exist in your 2D game, and that provides us some stuff, and we're just going to say create. Boom. So to kind of go over that again, because I talked a lot and maybe got confusing, you click the plus, you can leave everything the same and hit create. I did not change anything. So you can cancel. Um, so now what I can do is I can click on that, and it will take me into my first little bit of code here. So it's about to get exciting. It always has some boilerplate stuff here to just kind of maybe jog your memory about what you're doing. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go set process true. And I'm going to like talk real quick about some of the cool things that Godot now provides to you. It did not always used to do this. So you'll notice I typed set and it shows me a bunch of options. I hit underscore and there's more options but there, there's fewer options and they're more likely to be what I need. I'm looking for set process and uh, there it is. So I can just hit enter now and then it's showing me some some little useful hints here. It's telling me a little bit about what the set process function expects and what it returns. So let's we'll talk about those two things real quick. Here where it says void, that tells me that this isn't going to return any values, it just does something. And it, it probably takes some arguments, those are the things that go inside of the parentheses, those are values like maybe um, a piece of text or a word or two or a sentence, or perhaps they're in this case a bool, which stands for boolean, and that means it can either be true or false. And it tells us, hopefully they've named their variables well enough that just reading this will tell you. So if I say set process and enable is true, then I'm telling it, yeah, go ahead and process things. If I say set process false, it means stop doing that. Now let's talk about what process is. Unfortunately, right here it tells you process function is called every frame. Delta is the elapsed time since the previous frame. So let's go ahead and uncomment these. Um, I guess I better mention what a comment is. So if you see this little hash sign before it, hmm? yeah, how do you uncomment them? That's a great question. So any line that has this little hash sign before it is going to be commented. If you want to uncomment the line, you just delete it. If you want to comment a line, then you add one. Uh, a commented line will not have any effect on the execution of your game. So you can include informative stuff like this, where it tells you about it, and then anybody looking at the code has some information, and that's what comments are normally used for. Sometimes comments are also used when you're trying to solve, figure out where the code is going wrong, and you can like comment out a, a line of code and see what happens in the execution of your game. So in this case, I uncommented these two so that they will actually be executed instead of ignored like they were when they were commented and you'll notice here it says pass so here's the thing I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of that pass and it's probably gonna yell at me here yeah see that so I got a red line it's like something's wrong down at the bottom it's telling me what it says an indented block is expected okay so that tells me something we need to talk about so I'm gonna go ahead and indent it it's still not good though it's still gonna be angry at me because now the error message is less clear. Every function, whether it's returning something or not, has to have something inside of it. If you are just mocking it up and you don't want it to do anything yet, then you just add the word pass, which is what they had. And that says, yeah, I'm a function, I exist, but I don't do anything, so when you call me, just pass it on to the next line. Like, don't do anything in here. So that's what we're doing there. We will be doing something shortly with it, though. Let's do that. Scorpion 2D is a node 2D. We want it to move. And uh, so what we're going to do is let's talk about coordinates real quick. Okay. In Godot, 0, 0 is the center, which means that a negative value for x, meaning the left and right axis here, is going to move things from the right side to the left side. And a positive value for x is going to move it from the left to the right. And for y, 
if this is 0, 0, let's see, does this give me coordinates anywhere? It kind of does. You can see it on the side here. And negative values go up on the y, and positive values go down on the y. So this is your negative, negative, and this is your uh, positive on the x, negative on the y, positive in the y and the x, and negative on the x, positive on the y. Now I'll get into what I'm, why I'm telling you that. So we'll go back in here. I'm going to click script to go back to my script. I want to make it so that every frame, that scorpion is going to move. Okay. How fast do we want it to move? Well, let's go ahead and tell it that. So we're going to say export speed equals, let's say, 5. Okay. And I think if I put a comma here, export var speed 5 with a little colon, colon tells it uh, to figure out what what type of value this is. So now what I can use, that's uh, creating a variable that will exist and be exposed to the game engine here. So you'll notice I, I created in the script there, I created this speed 5, and then I selected a scorpion in my game in, in my editor, and you'll see over here in the inspector, I can see speed 5. So what I've done is I've set a default speed, but we'll get into what that's going to do in a minute. Now, we got to do something with that because just setting speed isn't going to do anything. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these. So setting speed doesn't do anything. We want it to actually move. How do we do that? So we're going to look at self real quick. Let's self inspect. And you can see that self has a whole bunch of things. That's just that's just too much. Let's see if it has an x. Okay, so this, no, nope, x. You know what? It doesn't have an x. It has a position. Yeah, there we go. So you guys just saw. I don't know everything. I kind of figure it out as I go. And uh, in this case, you can say self dot position. Keep in mind, you don't have to include the self. Uh, in fact, I'm, I'm not going to. It does make it more clear, though. So a position, though, that has an... That doesn't have an x. Come on now. Self dot position dot x. Hey, where is it? Okay, guys, it's time to hit Google. What is going on here? <laughs> no, for real. Oh, hold on. Self dot transform dot x. Nope, is it? Nope. Okay. Yeah, it's time. Google, help. So let's try it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pop open Chrome here. Bloop. Yeah, that's how it works. Here's a Chrome. And we're going to do this. We're going to say a ghetto engine transform in GD script. Something like that, right? So we want to. Let's look at some Godot docs here. How do I move this guy? So there's a lot of different ways, but let's see. X form. What is this? X form. Things have changed. X form transforms the given vector. No. All right. All right. Translated. Translates. Transform. No. So that might work, but scaled, rotated. No. All righty. How have I forgotten how to do this? I've done this a million times. And I cannot remember. But that's okay. That is absolutely all right. This happens. And it'll come back to me. But let's look at the sprite. What's it going to tell me about the sprite? I've got properties on a sprite. Uh, I've got get rect, flip h, flip v. These are all things that are useful. No, that's not what I need either. I am a node 2D. That's what I'm looking for. So let's go ahead and find the node 2D. There's a couple ways. You can control F and node 2D. Save yourself sc scrolling like I just was. Okay, we've got global position. We've got, yeah, position. I swear, guys, that's what I was looking for, right? So, self.position.x. Oh, you know what? It has an x. Because watch, if I click on here and I say position, and I say get position set. But it's a vector 2. Vector 2, they have an X and they have a Y. Those are the properties on a vector 2. And position is a vector 2. So you know what we're just going to do? Is we're just going to say plus equals speed. Okay. 
Let's see if it lets me do that. Yeah, doesn't care. It's happy. Safe. Let's see what happens if we do this now. What has changed? Oh, you know what? Well, we're gonna immediately see a problem. And, uh... Okay, only, <laughs> only one scorpion. He's moving, but all the other ones, they just darted straight off the map. It's not, it's not what we wanted. Okay. So these two scorpions, they're facing left. Let's t let's see why. Let's see what's the difference here. So let's take a look at some of the transform values here. I inverted this X value on the scale to flip it. Yeah, there's a couple ways you can do that, but that's the way I chose to do it. And then here, that's uh, let's see if that's the same. Yep. Oh, this scorpion. That's very bizarre. He's translated negative one on the Y. No, that doesn't make any sense at all. What is happening? Does this thing have a transform applied to it? No. Does this thing have a transform applied to it? No. Okay, then why on earth is he upside down? This makes very little sense. You know what? I don't like Scorpion 3. Go away, Scorpion 3. You're weird. Yeah. I don't like you at all. Okay, let's let's add another scorpion. I think we need another Timmy. Okay, here we go. We got another scorpion. And notice that he is a child of path three here. It's because I had path three selected when I dragged him onto the map. Now he's looking more normal. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the transform and hit negative one. And notice he's facing in the direction that you would expect him to be facing. We talked a lot about that. Now let's show you why. We'll go back into the script for the scorpion here. Make sure we're in the scorpion script. And so I'm moving always to the right because speed is a positive value. But what if I took this and instead of position, I look for scale dot x. Okay, so scale is also a vector too, uh, meaning it has an x and a y. And if I added speed times the scale in this case it's negative one right so that would make this a negative five so now instead of moving to the right because i was adding a positive number i'm going to be adding a negative number which remember is the same as subtracting which when we talked about our coordinate space here subtracting moves to the left so let's go ahead and see if those scorpions on the right do what we would expect oh yeah things are moving okay that's pretty cool <laughs> So I hope that wasn't too confusing, um, but right now they still are not behaving the way we would expect them to. Not really even at all. Okay, they just, they're not doing what we'd expect. So there's a couple different ways you can do this. I was working on these Navigation 2D where I set up these paths and I added the scorpions as children of the paths, which means that they can have a navigation node on them and um, there's like these path followers and stuff and what I think probably makes the most sense to do here is rather than defining these rather large paths and using the kind of computationally expensive method of doing a navigation mesh I mean we have a very well-defined path here and so what I think we can get away with I'm gonna go ahead and hide these bad boys real quick what I think we can get away with for this kind of a tower defense is I think I can add a path 2D right here. So I just type the word path and I can add a path. By default, path doesn't have any points. So let's go ahead and add some. I've got here I can select points, I can control them, or I can add a point. So I want to add points. Let's do this. Oh. Heck yeah. Okay, so this is going to be my first path that the scorpions are going to follow. And then they get here. Okay, so that's path A. Let's go ahead and call it that. Path... We'll call it path 1. Those are easier to iterate. Uh, let's go ahead and add another one. Path 2D. Keep in mind, uh, pay attention to that actually, I just noticed something I hadn't mentioned before. The color of the nodes actually tells you something about them. If they're blue, then they're a 2D. If they're red, then they are for 3D. So while we're building a 2D game, 
as long as you stick around and keep using blue nodes, you're typically in good good company here. You'll notice everything we've used is blue. Uh, if it's green, it typically has something to do with the user interface. So we are not dealing with green nodes yet, but that's kind of a handy thing that Godot does to keep it a little bit more clear uh, what kind of nodes you should be using. Um, well, we did need two more, so that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and click on this guy, and so that I don't accidentally select anything, I'm changing to move mode, and I'm going to drag this guy around. Oh, what am I doing? Look, I'm adding a path. I don't actually want to do that right now. So I'm going to undo. Yeah. And I'm going to move that guy. Oh, oh, it's not what I want. Stop it. Path. No, it's adding points. I don't want I don't want it to add a point. That's the thing. So this is, well, this is quite challenging, isn't it? I don't want that. Can I, can I zoom in? Let's try that. Arya is laughing at me, as she should be. Okay. I could move it if I click on it. So if you guys run into a similar struggle, apparently you have to click on that very tiny dot in order to move that very tiny dot. So let's go ahead and move that very tiny dot over here. We'll call this path two. And we're gonna go here, we'll call this one path three. Does this one exist anywhere yet? Where'd it go? Okay, there's that one. Do you guys see a dot showing up anywhere? I don't. It's got to be at zero zero, right here in the middle. That's why I didn't see it. It's too obvious. Yeah. Hey, hey, path three. Like I'm serious. I need you not to do that. <laughs> path three. What are? Where are you? Okay, you know what? I'm gonna move it away from zero zero manually here. This is annoying, isn't it? Let's move it to 150. Ah, now it's visible in a space where I can probably, I can do that. I these these paths are not being very easy to manipulate. That is really annoying. Let's try this again. I cannot. Can I move it with my? Oh, well. Okay. I can move it. Just uh, not very easily. So I got an idea. Let's look at the flag. <laughs> where we where we put the flag. And uh, we're just going to add it to that. Because now his location can... No, we're not going to do that. That will be very annoying. Okay, I'm going to do this. 150. And we'll move 150. God, that is just brutal, isn't it? 160. Why is it like that? I, hey, if you guys know what I'm doing wrong, feel free to chime in in the chat, but I'm feeling pretty silly right now because that is just not doing what I want it to. Uh, yep, still not doing it. All right, let's try 400. Hey, we're getting there. We're getting there. Maybe 500. Oh, so close. You know what? That's good. That works. Okay, so we've got that path figured out. I'm going to go ahead and click on the plus. Let's see if it lets me add nodes. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right, okay. So we're gonna start adding points to my path. Double click to terminate. Let's make sure that guy's got a name that's in line with everybody else's. Man, that guy's just a problem child, isn't it? All right, now I'm still in this, uh, this mode where I'm adding points, so I'm gonna click here and here and here and here and I'm just kind of being willy-nilly with my points but you know a little bit of randomization in these paths is probably a good idea because it'll look a little better as opposed to things just constantly walking um, in the exact same places which is kind of annoying uh, it kind of looks fake now you're gonna notice that they kind of wobble around um, and so in this way you can kind of control the path that the bad guys take now let's add a scorpion to a path Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to add one to path one down here. So you could add them to the spawn point or you can add them to the path. We'll talk about different variations here in a little bit. What might be a good idea is to go ahead and have the path on the spawn point that it goes to. 
and I'm gonna change some names of nodes here just for a second because there's a thing that I did and I was it's bad I should be more consistent otherwise it's gonna be really annoying Alright, boom all right so using an underscore and then the number that's very useful because I'll be able to loop through it in code later if I want to without an underscore is fine too uh, just got to be consistent, otherwise it's going to be confusing. So I've got these pads now. They've been added to the spawn points. Why would you do that, you might ask? And I will tell you why you would do that. You would do that because the scorpions have to be a child of the uh, path in order to use it. And is that true? I think that's true. We'll find out. And if it isn't true, well, then I can change things around. But it doesn't hurt to have it this way. And we're going to want the spawn points to be adding the bad guys or the creeps into the map. So uh, we want the path to be a child of the spawn point that we'll be adding it to the map. So let's go ahead and select that spawn point. Select the path. It's going to be this path. And drag a scorpion onto the map. So he's starting here. Now. Let's go write some more code. We now know that our scorpions are going to be children of paths. That's good to know because inside of the code we can refer to we can refer to the parent. So let's funk find next point. And we're just gonna call it that. Keep in mind we can just call things whatever. I'm gonna call pass right now because I don't know what I'm gonna do in there yet. But I do know that I need a function that's going to find my next thing I'm moving towards. Okay, here, uh, this will be changing. Right now, it just moves. So, we know get parent. Get parent is going to be, in our case, because of what we did, is a path. We may want to check that, but we're just, just right now, I'm going to assume that I've always added it to a path. You can also say is class you can do that there's things you can do to check and see I'm gonna have to book, read up some more because it's been a while since I did this but we're gonna say get parent and we're gonna assume that it's a path um, as path 2d so that will give me that's just telling Godot that this is a path 2d and so now there's a get path 2 and you can see this oh heck yeah and there's a node Okay, so we definitely need to be able to set the destination. Export var destination. Yeah, it can be empty. Totally, it could be empty. Okay, it's like, uh, that's not cool. You can't do that. Let's get rid of the colon. You gotta do something. If, well, I don't know what it's gonna be. So we'll tell it to be null. It still doesn't like it. It says, no, you cannot accept a null constant expression for inferring export type. I, I don't want to infer the export type. <laughs> it's going to be a node 2D. Now you don't have to infer. Get out of my hair. Now what is it telling? Invalid export type. Only built-in and native resource types can be exported. I'm sorry, what? You know what? That's silly. Mm -hmm. um, there is a way to do this, guys. I guarantee there's a way to do this. What? Let me tell you what I was trying to do. I want to be able to say that this flag here is the destination of all the scorpions that come from the spawn point. That's going to be a thing I need to be able to do in code. Uh, need to remember how to do it. But right now, uh, <laughs> let us use those groups that we were talking about. Heck yeah. Okay, so we're going to say or we're going to say ver destination. We don't want to actually do this every process tick. That is a horrible idea. So we're going to do this as soon as we think we're ready. Say var destination equals git tree. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Dot git nodes in group. Yes, that's what I need. And uh, do you remember what we called that? I think we called it home bases, right? Is that the group we added this guy to? We can verify that here. Groups didn't add it to any home bases add okay save now my home base that I've got on my map belongs to the group home bases so we're in here and we're gonna say destination well <laughs> we're gonna learn about scope here real quick guys 
What do I mean when I say scope? I mean that if I define a value inside of a function, that value only exists inside of that function. So I need to define it outside of the function so that it can be accessed by everybody. No, things do not have to be all uppercase, but I'm doing it because these are things that I don't want to be messing with. You can make them constants, but I'm just leaving them like this, destination, and I don't have to give it anything here. It's fine. And then I said, if I still say var destination, it's actually going to override that one and use a local scope within the function. So I'm just going to say destination, so I make sure it's using this guy. Get tree, get nodes and group, dot, well, you could say find last, or I could just say give me the first one. Mm -hmm. So what it's going to do is it's going to take... Ah, oh, <laughs> what did I do here when I said give me the first one? So w let's look at what this get nodes and group gives me. Uh, let me explain what I just did there, because that was magic, wasn't it? I held command or control, and if you command click or control click on a function name here, it takes you to the help for it. And here it tells me it returns an array. It returns a list of all the nodes assigned to a given group. Very cool. What's an array? Aha, here's some stuff about arrays. An array equals, and then it gives you a list of things. Godot is pretty cool, because it looks like arrays can contain values that are not all of the same type. And that is pretty neat. Not all languages support that, so that's cool. We're gonna go ahead and for scorpion.gd, we are now setting it to the zero width index. So let's go back to array. Are they zero indexed? It says accessible by a numerical index starting at zero. Very cool. I mean, as humans, we like to start counting at one, but for computers, they tend to more often than not start at zero. So that is why I chose zero instead of one. If I chose one and there's only one home base on the map, it would actually break the game. It would say uh, there are none. There is no index one because there's only a single thing and it's index zero. One is too many. So it'd say array index out of bounds is probably what you'd end up with. Anyway, so we got our destination now. Woo! Now we can do this. Destination. So now we can... Now that function works. Uh, let's go ahead and look at that function real quick. I'm command clicking and it is straight up failing me. Path 2D. What's a path 2D give me? Uh, you can have a path follow 2D child nodes moving along the curve 2D. See path follow 2D for more information. Hey, let's do that because we are trying to follow a path and that does make a lot of sense. Let's try it. Path follow 2D. This node takes its parent path 2D and returns the coordinates of a point within it given a distance from the first vertex. It's useful for making other nodes follow a path without coding the movement pattern. For that, the nodes must be children of this node. This descendant nodes will then move accordingly when setting an offset in this node. Okay. You know what? I'm going to make the scorpion. I'm going to change its type. I want it to be a path follow 2D. Sweet. That is going to break my code because I'm extending path follow 2D. Save. It says I'm broken. Why? It only works if it's the child of a path 2D node. I know. And that's fine. Totally fine. Let's go back in there, because that was some useful stuff it was giving us. It says, this node takes its parent path 2D and returns the coordinates of a point within it, given a distance from the first vertex. It's useful for making other nodes follow a path. So what? Do I just set its offset? That's all I gotta do? No. That... No way. Distance along the path in pixels. Returns a float. What's it return? I don't know. What time is it? 8.18. Um, that means you've been going for about an hour and 18 minutes. It's true. <laughs> Alright, I see a whole bunch of things here. Well, guys, let's try it. I mean, that would be sweet, right? I doubt that it's that easy. But let's give it a go. So we called it a path follower. Uh, this path follow 2D. Rather than manually setting our position, we're just gonna set our offset plus what kind of things? What is it? It's a float? You know, let's go back to that. Hold on. So it says offset, it's defaulting to 0, 0.0, the distance along the path in pixels. Okay. 
So we can say actually plus equals speed, and that should be fine. Not plus plus speed, that's silly. Plus equals speed. So that what this uh, this is shorthand for offset is equal to offset plus speed. Um, and so then that means that this value is getting incremented by speed or it's getting speed added to it and then having a new value set. So I like to use the shorthand because most languages do support that. All right, so I'm hitting save. We do not want to do this anymore. Let's go back here. We're gonna have a lot of broken scorpions now. All these, well, these are okay, actually. They all might work because I made them children. Oh no, okay, so yeah, here's a path. There's one scorpion on the path. Guys, if this works, I'm gonna be pretty stoked. I just don't know. Let's try it. Let's try and see what happens. Oh my god, that scorpion <gasps> is doing its thing. Oh, it was so easy. That is the way to do it. Okay. The chicky says You know yes. what, guys? I'm gonna end this stream on a win. I have a scorpion running from the spawn point to the destination. I leave it to you guys to continue that and add some scorpions to these. Oh, you know what? I'm going to do... I got to do one more. That was just too cool. Okay. Let's do another one. I'm going to take this path. This is the upper path here. I'm going to add... Lemon says hello. I'm going to add a scorpion. Can I do it this way? No, Dad. I cannot. So I'm going to add a... Well, lemon says hello. Lemon is so cute. Lemon is one of our chicks. Yeah, she's right next to us. All right. Hello, so I'm going to do that. Oh, he's upside... Why is he upside down? This little scorpion is upside down. If anybody figures out why that keeps happening, all about it, you should you should let me know. You know what? I wonder. Are you upside down? No. All right. Are you upside down? Guys, this keeps happening. It's like the second time. Um, all right, I'm gonna delete it and try again. Cause, what if I just go like this? Boom! It's upside. What if I drag it up here? It's still upside down. Oh, that is baffling. Okay, let's try another one. Let's try adding a scorpion to path three. Upside down. Oh, you know why? I do know why it's upside down. It's upside down because it rotates, no? I thought anyway. So you may have noticed that the fact that it's upside down here may be irrelevant. Let, you know what, let's just hit play. Let's see what happens. Oh yeah. That, I mean guys, that's looking pretty much like we're getting to where we wanna be. I'm leaving it. Uh, this is a good stopping point. You guys know what to do to flip those scorpions over, right? Why is the one on the left not inverted and the ones on the right are? Oh, that's just really frustrating. I will figure that out. And when I figure it out, I will include it in the next stream. That will be next Tuesday at 7.30. So feel free to join me then. Um, play around with this. In fact, I think I'm going to bundle this project up and I will post a link in the comments and you guys can download the project and just play from where you saw me get to. This one's top. Um, expect that shortly after this video goes public as a video and not a stream. And, this one's uh, top hat. and that's it. So I'm gonna kill the stream and y'all, this has been fun. I hope we do it again next week. I'll see Bye -bye. you then. Bye.